Okay, here we got a Kawasaki 300 brute force. Yeah, we've had, well, it's been running like a charm uh, until last summer when it started giving us problems. Uh, it wouldn't start easily and when it did, we had to keep on pushing the gas in order to keep it uh, running. It wouldn't idle, basically, it would just stop. So we think it's the carburetor that needs a cleaning. Uh, as uh, we'll show you, we'll try to start it now and you'll see what it sounds like. It won't, just won't start. All right, let's get to it. Okay, first of all, we'll start off by taking off the seat. That's done like this. See this lever under here? Pull that to the side and push up. There you go. The seat is off. The next step will be to remove these four screws. One, two, three, and four. All these screws are the same size, so just put them in the same spot. Next step will be to take this fuel thing off. Uh, now remember, this arrow shows that now it's on, and uh, we want it on the reserve. This is no, this is the reserve. We want it off. So turn that to off. And uh, now you remember how it sat. Next thing is to unscrew it with a normal screwdriver, this type. When you lift this thing off, make sure there's no dirt that can fall into the tank. You can probably put something over this. I will put a rubber glove on. Let's slide this thing off. In order to take this off, you have to push it that direction and lift it up. Perfect. This is what it looks like from the side, so you understand why you have to push it up. Okay, next step will be to remove this rubber glove and put the original lid on there to protect from any debris falling down into the tank. So the next step will be to uh, remove the air box, and you do that by unscrewing these two screws. We're using a size 10 millimeter socket for that. For removing the air box, you need to, to uh, remove the lid and check if, it, if there's any uh, debris and stuff in there, but it looks kind of clean. A bit dusty, but okay. okay in order to remove the hose uh, from the air filter to the carburetor, you have this little clip over here. The problem is the screw is faced upwards and we were a bit confused how to do that, but you can actually slide this thing by hand, hopefully. I'll get back to you when it's done. I noticed another thing, you can actually push this thing off by hand. You don't have to do that, but it's easy to, it's easier to turn this screw this way when you put it back on to tighten it. But in this case, you can just slide this thing off by hand. There. Step will be loosen the, the hose to this one, coming into the air filter and that one is situated in the back over there. The screw is accessible from, from the other side, so let's just screw it out. Using this two with a swivel head. Let's go. Okay, the final connection to the air filter is the little holes down there. It has a little clip, so we're going to figure out how to get that loose. Okay, this part is actually easier than I thought. To remove that, that clip or, or move that little um, clip on the pipe, you just wiggle the air box around a little bit, stick your arm in there, and you can actually squeeze the clip with your fingers quite easily. Okay, after a little bit of wiggling, it's finally loose. You just pull it out. That's what it looks like. Next step will be to remove the air box. I do that by using a little bit of force. Here we go. When we took the air filter box out, this little thing down here came off. Make sure you put it back. It, it's there to, to uh, gather any excess oil in the air box. Okay, now I've moved to the other side of the bike and we have to remove the other clamp for uh, for the pipe going into the engine from the carburetor. 
And that's the screw we have to unscrew. It's a normal screwdriver. Let's do it. Okay, now that the, the clamp is loose, we'll try to pull the carburetor out. By wiggling it a little bit. There we go. Okay, next step will be to remove the drainage pipe from the bottom end of the carburetor. It's done by squeezing those clips down there, just above my finger over there. We will also have to remove this pipe. It's clamped to this side and continues up here to another thing you have to push it through. It's not a clamp, it's like a plastic circle. Okay, in order to remove the throttle cable holding the actual carburetor to the engine, we'll have to unscrew that little screw with yellow on it to open this cover. Let's do that. Right. Okay, a big so warning to everyone. Uh, the screw that holds the cover to the throttle cable is made out of Play-Doh. I've used a whole range of tools here and, and finally I got it loose with this one. But be careful, I don't understand why anyone would put this kind of crappy screw in there, but uh, we'll have to ask Kawasaki about that. The throttle cable is fixated like this in that little groove. All you have to do is push this uh, thing to the right and slide it out with the cable. There, done. Okay, we've gone to the other side of the bike. What we have left is the the fuel uh, the fuel line and. Uh, the choke and in order to access the choke and unscrew it we will turn the carburetor towards ourselves to expose that little plastic thing we have there let's see get the light on it that's what it looks like let's get it we on. use a 12 millimeter wrench and uh, we have to be careful because i think the nut is in plastic actually so be careful with that Let's go. This was a bit difficult with the wrench to, to access, but, but we realized there's a little rubber thing covering here. So you can move this one so you can access easier with the wrench. Perfect. And in order to make this easier, make sure that the choke is set to zero. The only thing that remains is the fuel line and it's uh, held with a clip. So that should be fairly easy to remove. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and hit that like button. It really helps me a lot. Okay, now that the fuel line is loose, you can remove the carburetor from the engine. Perfect. Okay guys, now that we have the carburetor loose, uh, first thing to think of, the screwdriver you're using. Please try the bits properly before trying to unscrew these because I, I since the, the, the screw that holds the cover to the to the um, throttle cable was so bad, I wouldn't risk anything destroying these. And I tried this one out and it works fine. It's a PH Phillips head two.
so you know. Open this up. Whoop. As you can see, it's always good to have a bucket below so you can catch all the screws when they fall out. As you can see, it's a bit dirty in here, not that bad, but let's pick everything apart. Okay, guys, the next step will be to remove the floater. You do that by using a pointy tool like this and pressing this little pin out on the side. There we go. You remove the floater. This little head hanging down. This goes into this hole here. Let's put that to the side. Next step will be to remove these nozzles. And as you know, the, the quality of these things might not be the perfect. Uh, so uh, be careful. Use the right screwdriver for this. Uh, I've been searching like crazy for for a screwdriver that fits the hole to reach the nozzle that actually handles the idle. Uh, I had a screwdriver that was way too small. I was just too scared of of stripping the screw. So so what I finally found was in the original toolbox of the Kawasaki. Uh, I found this screwdriver, and it actually fits the hole, but but the flat head was too thick. To fit in here so what i did was to file it down a little bit with this tool so now it fits and works like a charm so so if you don't find any flat head that is suitable for this don't break this just use the original tool from the tool kit that came with the with the kawasaki you'll see you'll fit in here perfectly and you can get that little tiny thing out of there perfect I'm setting that aside same thing with these okay this thing put this one in the second little thing over here it belongs to this one another tool for that. For this one I use a uh, wrench size 8. Perfect, I'll put it uh, in the same little bucket as the nozzle that belongs to it. And then we have the final one. I'm gonna put it in a separate little bowl. Uh, it looks very similar to the one over here. Uh, so I'll put it here. As you can see, I put the little bowls in the same positions as these holes, just remember. First of all, well, let's clean the floater. This floater has a little peg thing over here. You can remove it quite easily. Be very careful so you don't break it. There, it looks like that. Let's clean this thing. I'm using carb cleaner for this. Uh, please notice that this has a little rubber tip uh, I would protect that with my fingers so we don't get too much carb cleaning on that because I don't know what effect this has, uh, this carb cleaner has on the rubber. This little green thing that you can push in here. I don't know why it's supposed to do that, but it looks kind of clean. I'm going to put it on a piece of paper here to dry. Okay, now I'm gonna spray the carburetor with a carb cleaner and let it sit for a while. Use it quite richly. I just remembered, maybe not so good to put this on the rubber seal, so I'm wiping it off. 
straight away. I have to wipe this thing off so I'm stuck a needle under it and push it around like this to loosen it. Hopefully I don't break this because then I'll be in trouble. There we go. I did that with the needle. I'm gonna wipe this off properly. As I don't have a, an extra spare one. Okay, back to the carburetor. This, this has been sitting, the carb cleaner has been sitting for a while. And I'm just wiping this off from all the green stuff. Uh, be careful of these things so you don't bend them. Little pipe. You see all the green is coming out. Just work with it and I'll get back to you when this feels clean. Okay, uh, need quite a lot of this car cleaner in here. Just fill these this up it's kind of difficult to clean in them i'm going to use a little trick later on to show you but first of all i'm going to use compressed air to blow it out using this thing you can also see what happens when you Engage the throttle. And spray in here as well. See some green stuff. Wipe it off. Next I'll do this. Uh, add some more carb cleaner into these holes. One of them has a little uh, peg. So be careful with that. Uh, fill these up with carb cleaner and then you attach a q-tip to your screwdriver or power drill spray it with some more carb cleaner and use it to clean these things up there way better I'm leaving this one be as it's a bit vulnerable okay now it's time to clean the the nozzles give them a good spray with carb cleaner this one seems to be blocked remove any dirt in here The hole is very tiny, so I'm going to put some carb cleaner in there again. I'm going to use some compressed air to see whether it goes through. Actually fits in the end. So if you see on this side, should be airflow. Yeah, it works. Perfect. While cleaning the other um nozzles i'm gonna put this one here and leave it in the back with my carb cleaner it can sit there now that i know that air comes through it next we have the nozzle that handles the idling of the bike put some carb cleaner in there as well as you can see it has several little holes just make sure to use a needle or something to poke all the way through. Make sure none of them are blocked. Okay, next piece, same thing.
using the needle to poke through every single hole here. Okay. Same thing on this side. Now that I've poked hole with a needle into those little holes, I can try to hold my finger on top of here and spray the carb cleaner through it to see whether this, uh, the hole, holes around are free. Looking good. And the final piece. The hole on this one seems to be quite fine. Okay, time to put everything back together. Same order we took it out. enough and the final nozzle here that should be enough put this thing back on the floater we put the floater back we need to put this little thing down the hole down here like so Finally, we put the peg back that holds the floater, like that. Should move freely, and when you turn it upside down, work like that. Before putting the gasket back, I'm gonna cover it in a little bit of fat. That can take some heat, so this thing doesn't dry up. It seals better. Back there. Very good. Perfect. Very good. We're ready to put this thing together. Oh, okay, now that the screws are back, you can actually turn the carburetor over and listen if the floater is still moving in there. All right, let's put everything back together. And now we're reattaching the, the cover over the bottle cable. Next, we put the choke cable back in. And we're pushing the rubber cover back. Here. Now we're attaching the fuel line. Make sure the carburetor is situated horizontally so, so uh, it works properly. 
As you can see, the clamp on the front pipe, the front of the carburetor, we've uh, spun it around to, to make it more accessible from the right side of the bike to tighten with a screwdriver. You can check whether it's straight from the back of the bike, like that. Tightening the clamp on the right side. As you can see, uh, it's way easier to reach the clamp from this side. Okay, for, as I mentioned before, when we put this back, we need to change the position of this clamp so we can reach the, the screw way easier than we did from start. Uh, so we twist it downwards and so, so the head of the screw faces the left side of the bike so we can go straight in with a screwdriver. We only have these things left that go into the air box. And finally, the clamp holding the airbox to the carburetor. And we're done, let's go. Airbox is in, aligning it with our carburetor. Now we have to manage to fit the pipings into the airbox. It's kind of difficult to reassemble this small pipe to the airbox because there are two clamps. One of them I'm holding from my side because it's a silver clamp closest to me. Very easy to squeeze with the fingers, but the other one is tougher. There we go. Just to describe how I did it, uh, get those things attached I stretched my arm in here on the right side right under here reached under it and grabbed this pipe like a cigar and pulled it towards me and that worked perfectly okay now we got that final pipe going to the airbox that we have to squeeze in there and then Tighten the clamp. There, now it's finally on. Just have to tighten that screw. The final step is to attach the pipe from the airbox straight to the carburetor. Okay, little tip. If you want to make life easier on you, uh, getting this hose from the airbox back onto the carburetor, completely remove the clamp. Just loosen it to the maximum and slide it backwards. Uh, as the slightest friction or resistance makes it super hard to slide it back on the carburetor. So completely remove that, put the carburetor, well, the hose from the airbox on, and then reattach the clamp. Oh, I forgot something. We need to reattach the fuel control. Bring it back, same position where we left it off let's go let's set this one to reserve and try it out okay let's screw the airbox back onto the bike and now let's put the lid back on finally we put the lid back on top of the gasoline tank perfect let's put the seat back on and fire this thing up or at least try to Hopefully it runs. Okay, let's, let's fire this thing up. Just some choke. <laughs> Works like a charm. So 
choke is off. It's idling, but I could probably adjust that carburetor a little bit. Thank you guys for watching. Please press that like button and subscribe.